Hello and welcome to my morning note. Let's take a trip today to the land of the rising sun and the falling yen. There's been very great excitement over the dramatic moves in the currency market over the last few days, which have seen the yen crash through the psychologically important level of 100 to the dollar and come to rest more like 102 to the dollar. It's a very dramatic and swift change, but is it because of the weakness of the yen, driven by Abenomics, or the strength of the dollar? And can such a violent and sudden move really signal the start of a long-term trend? With me now to discuss this and much more is the Chief Global Strategist at City Index here in London, Ashraf Lady. Ashraf, thanks very much for joining me once more. Let's start by uh, taking a look at that uh, key, uh, key graph here. Now, obviously, uh, that move in the yen is quite dramatic and quite remarkable. But if you look at the gold against the dollar, which we've got on an inverted scale there, you can see that the dollar has strengthened really quite dramatically against gold as well. How much is this about the weakness of the yen and how much about the strength of the dollar? We all know that it's very much uh, about the weakness in the yen. The weakness in the yen was part and parcel of the campaign of Prime Minister Abe. Mm. And uh, uh, the monetary policy shock and awe is part and parcel of that. Mm. Uh, we have seen eight straight monthly gains in dollar yen. Never seen this since the dollar uh, uh, went into, into the market in 1973. We've never seen this. Really? Eight never. straight monthly gains. We've seen seven in the mid-90s. We've seen seven in uh, the 70s. Um, uh, Isn't that rather a good line that perhaps we should expect it to reverse then, if it's, uh, if we're, if it's been that consistent and that unusual? This time it's different. Why it's different? This time it's different. Very scary words. Mm. Why is it different? Never mm. we've seen the head of the Central Bank of Japan was a man from uh, the Finance Ministry. Right. His job was to actually talk about the currency. There's a reason why he was being appointed. There is another thing. The dollar aspect of the dollar-yen relationship. Yeah. Uh, the dollar is basically, it belongs to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is the only central bank that is most likely to taper or to reduce quantitative easing. Even though we do not believe right. that they're going to taper quantitative easing this time, they're most likely uh, going to reduce that. And that is a positive for the So what the you're US saying dollar. is just at the margin relative to others. You're not necessarily buying the, the talk that they start reducing QE within the next matter of months but that you are saying that they're a good bet to be the ones that tighten first. Relative to others, and that's what the currency market is, it's a relative play. The Bank of, the Bank of England is unlikely to end QE, especially with right. the new man at the helm coming up uh, this summer. And uh, the ECB speaking about, uh, about the negative uh, uh, rates. Uh, the Bank of Canada right. could have some issues with the housing and, and with the banks, uh, but the dollar is expected uh, to basically to be anticipated to have the higher growth. Okay, let's take a look at uh, one of the key sources of weakness in the world economy, which is Germany, uh, which you see as perhaps counterintuitively being important to the uh, dollar-yen relationship. This is uh, very important because this story, Germany was seen as maybe the country that is most likely to drag the peripherals out of uh, mm. the recession. Uh, but right now it seems that the services sector, the manufacturing sector for Germany, they're both in contraction below 50. Uh, we may see the GDP numbers for Q1 for Germany coming back above zero. But we're seeing the sluggishness here in Germany that is telling us that the Germans are likely to continue to embrace a weak euro and a stronger dollar. Which gives license also for weak weakness in the yen. Now let's finally take a look at another chart that might tell us something about the weakness in the economy. Blue line there shows you that stocks are continuing to surge ahead, as many will have noticed. The red line says that they've com completely parted company with commodities. Is that because of weakness in the economy? Does that play into your weak yen goal. Absolutely. We're seeing the disparity between the markets and between the economy. The commodities are, are, uh, are basically uh, going, uh, uh, going down. As, as you can see, probably oil is the only one that is pushing higher, but iron ore, silver, and gold, they're all coming down. Market metrics, as seen here in the blue chart, they're pushing higher. That does not necessarily mean it's going to spill over into the economy. And as long as we have the risk of weakness in the economy, we, have, we may have more of a risk of disinflation mm. rather than inflation. And that means it's going to prolong the QEs by Japan. And that is going to be at the expense of the Japanese yen. And the Japanese investors are expected to continue to take money out and search yields abroad. OK, Ashraf, thank you very much indeed. I find that curiously a persuasive 
argument, I suppose, the only big thing that could derail what is obviously a very strong trend towards yen weakness is if the US economy surprises us all by weakening a lot further than we're expecting it. Other than that, it does look like yen weakness from here.